Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, what a nice day. I just seem to be in good spirits. You jumped right in on that free hymn. Uh, <laughs> it's going to work that just well. So we're glad you're here today on this beautiful day. The, the church board meeting is, of course, April the 12th. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in large print. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, and uh, we have a hymn sing next week, uh, next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Um, Denise, you have something you wanted to share? Or no? Uh, about the yard sale. Yeah. The yard sale is going to be postponed. Okay. Too many things in the town going on, and we didn't have a lot of people that signed up for it, or right. couldn't make it. So right. we're going to postpone it to a later date, and we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. The, it has to be taken down out front. Yes. Still says it. If you can take Not it that down it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's you in particular, but. Oh, we need to change the sign. <laughs> yeah, we need to change the sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also have to cancel our work day. Dave, you want to say something about that real quick, please? Yeah. Um, Jane and I were here the other day. Uh, we started trimming the trees. And you see two piles of debris there. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow from 10 to 12 if any way is available. Basically, we'll handle the trees and trim in the bushes. Uh, I need people for weeding and raking leaves. Uh, two hours, that's it. We'll see how much we get done. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Any other announcements? Okay. Well, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, as we begin this service, this is a beautiful day. And uh, it's a busy day for us, but a good day. I just pray, Lord, as we begin this time of worship, that we will focus on you. Whatever we're going to be doing later on, that's another issue. But we do the. We just want to pray, Lord, right now that we focus on Jesus, draw us closer to you, Lord. And we thank you for the gift of salvation, the greatest gift we've ever been given. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Jean is doing very well. Jean. You know, in Cedar Grove. And it's a shame Joanne saw me walk down and I said she should have hollered. I would have came in to see Jack, but I thought he was leaving that day, Friday. So, but it's tomorrow. He's on dialysis. Yeah. He must have been around the same time I was there. Around, well, I was there Friday morning. Yeah, I was, and then I was later the day. And left around lunchtime. But yeah. Jean was doing her exercise. Wasn't yeah, she <laughs> was. By the 27th, yeah, yeah. he came yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, for Patty, she's on a cruise right now, yeah. so safe journey for yeah. them, all of them on the cruise. Mm -hmm. And for Ishwami, um, I leave Saturday. Okay. So just safe journey on a cruise there, too, that the ship is okay. Because right. Helen just wants to sing and have fun, not go over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay. And foreign spoken. I'm four, sorry. four. Yeah, got you. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh. Wait. I have a joy. Yes. Our grandson, Luke, is graduating from Rutgers University this week. Uh -huh. That can't be possible. <laughs> Remember when he was born? Baptized. I baptized him. He just graduated from college? <laughs> hmm. That means I'm a lot older than I was. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Yes, Harry. Right. Um, I had two telephone calls this week. 
one from Pat Duncan. She wants everybody to know she really misses our show. But things sound in, in the roundabout way of her telling me things. Uh, I think she's, she's happy there, but her heart is here, okay? And then uh, anybody that um, goes back as far as Adelaide and I go back, she is suffering from strep throat. So if anybody wants to send her a card, please do that to cheer her up. And she's also homesick for this old little church. And uh, I have somebody that I want you to meet. I want you to say hello to them when you, you travel around the church. But Joe came back to visit us again this week. So we oh, are going to go to Joe back. Hi, Jim. Yourself each week, and uh, I got you in prayer. And, but I think we need a lot of prayer. 
everything goes well with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, my granddaughter, she graduates Monday tomorrow from Rowan, and she's going on a second from college, a second interview for teaching position. Okay. So I'm praying that she does get it. It's for second grade, mm -hmm. and uh, she's been doing it now for nine mm -hmm. months, and I'm just hoping her foot is in the door. It's a good job. Permanent, yeah. She so loves this week it, I'm going to so. retire from Camden County College for four years now. So <laughs> yeah, so it's good with the kids. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> All right, anyone else? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris from my son in law, he's going in for surgery on Wednesday. And his name is Bob. Oh my god, I can remember that already. <laughs> okay. I got it. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, yesterday, um, I went to go for a bike ride yesterday when I was told that I had to come down here and help out. So I rode my bike here. <laughs> so, but yesterday was such a beautiful day, you know? Every time I go for these long bike rides, I thank God for what He gives me, what I see. And then he gives me the ability to still ride, even though I don't ride a lot, but I can still put the miles on my on my on my feet and pedals, you know. Right. Little things. You can see a lot of things when you're going slow around the neighborhood. People are growing flowers, little trinkets in their front yard and stuff, you know. You, you see people, you greet people, you know, it's just a wonderful feeling. And I feel God in my heart even more when I like riding and I see people along the way. We did the MS walk yesterday. I was like, I've never seen the back of Boathouse, bro. <laughs> We've never seen that before. You know, it's like, you, know, yeah, you know, it's a lot of things. Okay. All righty. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Hurt or like, I don't know. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, this cancer stuff is awful stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we pause now to come to you in prayer, <clears throat> prayer is important, but we need to do more than pray in church on a Sunday morning. It should be a part of our daily life and routine. Of all people, I'm, we should know most of all we've seen. We've seen the answer to prayer. But keep in mind that a lot of times the prayer isn't answered the way we particularly want it to be answered. So I just pray, Lord, that uh, as we pray, we would always pray according to your will, not our will be done. So, Lord, again, it's important that we pray, meet the needs that are here, and we thank you. We can come to you now as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the night is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the earth. Amen. When our church come at this time, we have two offerings. Our second offering will be the communion offering.
we receive this offering, we give it you, it's for you, Lord, that we may share the, the, the power of salvation, the glory of God. And we thank you, Lord, for being our personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. <laughs>
I will become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. <clears throat> but he did not know <clears throat> that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They sent him to grinding grain in the prison. Lord, I just pray now that you would speak to me what you have placed on my heart. No message works unless the Spirit speaks through me. So I pray now, Lord, that you would give us the message we need to hear. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> it's interesting in the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 32, we mention there some very special names. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jehoshaphat, David, Samuel, and the prophets. So you might say that Samson is listed of those of great faith. Now the story would end later on where he would eventually destroy the temple and pushing it down and get his strength back. We're not really going to look at that. Normally when you do a sermon, that's how you end. It's the big climax and, and you know, the power of God came back. But we're not going to go that far. We're going to stop right in the text and see why. So he's now listed as one of those great heroes of faith. We know at the end he showed faith in God and as a result destroyed the Philistines and once again got his strength back. But he made a big error, and that was not obeying the vow he was given. Now, we know what the vows are. Today, I'm going to do a wedding this afternoon for a young man I watched grow up, and they'll make a vow to each other. When you accept Christ as Savior, you are also making a vow. You are pledging your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the rest of your life, and that's very important. <clears throat> now, Satan had great strength. In fact, I thought about this sermon early. I was watching looking up television, which I don't watch a lot of TV, but it's that old me TV stuff, old shows. But they have weightlifting on it. So, so I just happened to look at it. And the guy comes out, you know, you have to look at a bike in here, straighten the arms up. And these dudes are big, big neck and everything. So uh, they, were, they were lifting that, and I thought, what strength? What do you guys think about Samson? I thought about all week. So I said, let's read a little bit about Samson and kind of Google it and come up with a message. So that's why you're hearing this today. Well, he could have taken on any of the great. He could have been the heavyweight champion of the world with his hands behind his back. You won't say I could beat him with my hands tied behind my back. This guy could claim that. He performed many deeds of great greatness. <clears throat> now listen to these. He killed a lion single-handed. So I'm kind of picture, you know, the lion go to all of them. He slew the Philippines with a jawbone of an ass. Yeah, he took that jawbone and destroyed them. He carried off the heavy gates of Gaza. They were heavy. The only thing that stopped Samson was sin. Samson, with his great strength, was no match for sin. We will never get to the place where you can say, I have spiritually arrived. <laughs> I've not got there for sure. And we think we're now, we, we we're now pleasing in God. Sometimes clergy get to be that way. I know some ministers think they're really got all together. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a minister. But um, they, they, they really think they got it all together. But you know what? Always be on your guard. Some people preach a, a religion that, well, once you got it, you won't, you'll never lose it. But you know what? There's warning in the Bible about that. It says that if we should fall, we have had to the Father through Jesus Christ. That's not a license to sin, but if you goof up, don't give up. Because God's ready to, to lift you back up. That's so very, very important. Very, very important. But sometimes we don't do what God wants. We don't let God lead us. Um, I heard a wonderful example of that in a church in Madison, South Dakota, the church I'd married in almost 50 years ago. The priest, the, the minister there is a blind man. And um, Fascinating guy. He's never seen a human face. So I love to ask questions of somebody like that. I said, what do you call beauty? Like a, a beautiful person. He said, my, my wife's beautiful. 
I've never seen her face, really, but, but she has the inner beauty and just radiates. And certain things that he said to me, we got talking about things, and they talked about prejudice and race, and I said, how, how, what do you think about those things? He said, well, all people look the same to me. I, I'm curious what a person really looks like, but I kind of can feel in my wife's face. I, I kind of have a, I thought, wow, you don't know what a person really looks like. But he said, I, I have to rely on my seeing eye dog. So he was going up the main street in the town of Madison, and this dog, these dogs are well trained, as you know how to train dogs. And they're up, and all of a sudden the dog stops. And he says, come on. Dog wouldn't budge. He's pulling up the dog. He said, well, if you won't leave it, I'll leave. Well, he made a step forward, and there was a hole about this deep. And down he went. Let go of the dog, and he's laying there in the bottom. And he said to me, I'm just picturing that dog looking down and saying, you dumb blind man. <laughs> he said, this dog knows that street perfect. And he knows to recognize any hazard. And I wouldn't listen. <clears throat> Don't call him. He said, he did, what a fool. He, did, he, did, he, did, he, wouldn't, wouldn't, he said, I wouldn't, didn't pay attention. From that day on, I have never questioned that dog. And he told that sermon. And he said, the problem is, God says, stop. We don't stop. God says, beware of that. Samson was dedicated from birth, the Nazarite vow. He knew better, but he was tempted. The only thing that stopped Samson and lost his strength was sin. And sometimes we're no match for sin. As a result, we see Samson's life going downhill rather fast. Now, why is this event preserved in the Bible? I believe it's relevant for us today. We do the same thing. Now, there are two characters in this story, Samson and Delilah. <coughs> it's more of a story <coughs> that was made into a movie. In fact, I remember going to the Arnold Theater in my hometown and seeing Samson, Hattie, Hattie Lamar, and Victor Mature. <laughs> Boy, am I... Yeah, you remember? <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. I, really I would say, maybe you're not getting old, but I am. <laughs> it was a great movie. And then the final scene, and, he, and the temple came down. It was a great movie. So let's look at the downfall of Samson. He let this, the Lila deceive him. We see him going down to Sork, that's the town, to see this woman named Delilah. He was infatuated with her. And the Bible says he sinned greatly with her. You can fill in the other part yourself. <laughs> she was all, all about, it says she was all, uh, as um, she was as he began to think about her, his priorities got out of balance. I bet his prayer life went down too. Too much Delilah thinking. What dominates your thoughts during the day? What do you think of? Do you think about the Lord? I think that's important to do. It says in the Bible to pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't mean you have to pray all the time. I was uh, riding with a guy one time, pastor, going to a meeting, and he said, we need to have prayer up there. It's a dangerous road. So he closed his eyes and started to pray. I grabbed the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I said, pal, it's okay, but it's, uh, I got faith in God, but not in you blindfold. <laughs> so he's, he's seeing this woman. He forgets about God. Now, the Philistine lords went to Delilah, and they told her that Samson was an enemy of the country. And they needed her to find out what is the secret to his strength. It was God's understanding. It was God. And they didn't understand the power of God. They just, you see, so when he took a vow, they would have understood that. So the next time Samson comes to see Delilah, she had all that she could do to find out the secret of his strength. He finally gave in. She was nagging him. Some women nag their husbands. Ooh, I better watch what I say on that one. <laughs> so finally, he said, all right, all right, I'll tell you what the secret is. I'm tired, just get off my back. She told him, and, and, and uh, he said that he had never had his hair cut. And the devil is, of course, persistent when he tempts you. Don't think as a Christian, you're going to be exempt from, from temptation. Uh, when we were living in the Kansas City area, we went to the, well, they had a, Billy Graham Crusade and Kemper Arena went to the Royal State in the last, the last day. And I had a friend that told me one time, I remember this, he, he, he went forward. And he really was, he nominal belief in anything, but he went forward. 
and he told me, met with a counselor, and he accepted Jesus right there about where second base is. Then. And I said, what prompted you to go? He said, I'm going to walk on the field the first time. He said, I'm being honest. But when I got down there, I wasn't concerned about walking on the field. It really took to heart. Something spoke to my heart. And he said to Christ. He said, about a month later, I saw him and said, how are things going? He said, I have never been so tempted in my life. I never got tempted before. Well, I was a lost sinner, that's why. But he said, all of a sudden, I had a tough time. But it's getting a little better now. I'm reading my Bible a lot, and I'm praying a lot. And God's going to help me. The devil is persistent. He wants to destroy us. And there is a real Satan and a real hell. And people tell you, well, that's not really true. Don't believe it. So he faces temptation. So the next time that uh, Samson gets him in, Samson now, he's got, she calls him in, they cut his, he gets a free haircut. And now he's bald, Samson, I guess. And uh, he cries out and says, Samson, the Philistines are here. He finds himself helpless. Note he didn't realize it at first. You see, he didn't realize something had changed in his life because he'd already drifted away spiritually. And after a while, if you drift too far from the Lord, it doesn't bother you to not read your Bible. Well, I'll do it later. I'll pray a little later. <clears throat> we read in verse 20, he did not know that the Lord had left him. That means he had really declined spiritually. You know, if you haven't read a Bible in a week and you haven't thought about it, maybe you better get on your knees and pray a little bit. Because if you don't realize that something's wrong spiritually, you're already in spiritual trouble. At first, he's totally unaware. Today, we see many illustrations of that. Men and women who think they've been living for Christ. And you know, I'm a good Christian. Famous line, I'm better than most people. I go to church on Sunday. I give money in the offering plate. Therefore, I am a good Christian. All those things are important, I believe. I was, I was in the past. I'm not going to promote church attendance and giving. But the real fact of the matter is, it's about spiritual growing every day in your life to grow spiritually. So now, these people, they wanted to get Samson. Now, Samson also got involved in the sinful pleasures of the world. And let's face it, sinning can be fun. And it's really true. My brother and I used to have a conversation. He said, why? Well, sinning's kind of like dieting. Why is it the things you don't like you're supposed to eat and the things that you love to eat are bad for you? It just seems to be that way. And it's that way in the world, too, the pleasures of the world. Is it? So he, what we have here is a prime example of spiritual decline. God was, became second place in his life and that woman, Delilah, who he lusted over, became number one. And all of us have some kind of Delilah. That thing we like more that we put ahead of God. Samson's strength did not lie in his hair, <coughs> but in the fact <coughs> that God was with him. His hair was part of the vow, but it was the commitment that he had made. When this vow was broken, God's strength left him. God promised spiritual strength. And he'll give all of us spiritual strength. Isaiah 40, 20 says, He gives strength to the weary. And those are times you'll wonder, can I ever get through? I think we've all been places where you say, I don't know if I can do this or not. But God will get us there. Strength to the weary. Strength that we need when we obey him. And secondly, let's look at the cause of his downfall. It began when he went away, let's see, he went the way of sin. And he shifted his allegiance from God and the pleasures of the world. He looked at the now and didn't consider the long-range effects. Too many of us do that. But few do that today. The devil has a way of making sin look really, really good. We tell our children not to play with fire, you'll get burnt. But as adults, we let sin come in our lives and we'll really get burnt in a really bad way. But don't be fooled. Sin is sin. A lot of people say, well, it's a, it's a, it's a mirror. I like, I like to say little white lie. A little thing. It's just a little thing. We categorize it. Well, there's these bad sins. These are the good sins. Well, I'm a good person. I mean, we rode by two gas stations today on the way here, and I didn't want to rob anyone of them. <laughs> Therefore, I'm not a thief. That's crazy. But how committed am I? As we have ridden by several churches to get to this one 20 miles from the house, we notice one thing, the parking lots, the parking lots are not quite as full as they used to be in all the churches. And other clergy tell me, one church I know, he hasn't even got back half his congregation. He's run about 110, he's down to about 40. 
Where did they go? A year of clothes didn't help me. You see, you got to keep on top. You know, it's things you have to really work hard at. I know in, in, when I was in high school, it was one of the things I did physically I could never do now. <coughs> but if you play any kind of sport, you got to really be good at it. I can remember, um, you know, we've, um, when we're kids, you know, we like to play baseball and stuff, and there's always not enough kids. So when I was a kid, um, Bill Scourin played first base for the, for the Yankees. After the Dodgers and Giants left, we kind of became, by default, Yankee fans, any team left in the city. But uh, we didn't have a first baseman. So we took my mom's wash tub <laughs> and uh, put it up on a board and we pounded nails on the side of it. <laughs> we called it Bill Scourin. <laughs> And I got so good that if there's ever a contest to stay on the pitcher's mat and throw it a wash tub on first base, I was active. So if you threw the ball and hit the wash tub, it could bounce out. But if it hit scoured, you were automatically out. Yeah. Guaranteed first baseman. And my assumption, we had an angle. One time somebody hit a ball and it bounced and went in the tub. That's an out. Scoured, Bill Scoured caught the ball. So, <laughs> yeah, we got to improvise, right? Exactly. So you get really good at it, and, and the more you do that, you know, it's like, uh, I kind of invented T-ball too. I took a washing machine hose and put a ball in it, kept hitting. Yeah, I did that with nobody else. They didn't have T-ball in the basement. I didn't get the credit for it, somebody else. Probably somebody rode by and saw, look at that kid hitting a ball of a wash tub with a, a, a hose, and a, a <laughs> patented it. But the more you did that, it got to be second nature. Ball comes out, throw over to that thing. Every time you do that. And you get pretty good at throwing at a wash tub. <laughs> and a real person, too. Spiritually, we've got to keep in spiritual shape. Are we physically in shape? Now, as you get older, the body starts to let you know certain parts are there. <laughs> Knees, elbows, back, lower back, upper back. I got this morning, my leg, and I went, oh, man, my legs are kind of stiff. But spiritually, I don't care how you're 100 years old, there's no excuse for spiritual out of shape. You gotta work out spiritually. That's praying, reading the scripture, come to church, fellowship with other believers. Get, get with some friends and pray. Get with some friends and read the Bible together. Do those kind of things, and you'll be in spiritually good shape. Now the Philistines, of course, they got their, they got their way. So um, again, Sin. Sin is like a, like Lay's potato chip commercial. Like, you, know, you can't eat just one. <laughs> and you know, that's why you eat the whole thing. My, my brother Jim has this theory. Um, he would come and stay with us, and uh, I'd say, uh, where'd the rest of those Oreo cookies go? Where'd that go? And he'd go, like this. And she said, he ate the whole box. Well, he considered a serving the whole box. <laughs> And he justified that by saying, they put a lot of air in it now, and it's not that many cookies anyway, so wipe out the whole thing. <laughs> too much air. Too much air, yeah, too much air, that's exactly right. So, we can't, we can't just do one. You know, it's like the person, I'll just have one drink. I can, I mean, alcoholics just have one drink. If we're not careful, though, things come into our life. <clears throat> Verse 21 shows us that without, without God, Samson was helpless, <clears throat> and then reduced to a miserable state. I tell you, every time in the last 40, some five years I've been standing in front of churches and preaching, I always, after I read that scripture, say a prayer. And I tell you this morning, when I come up here, I've said this many times, when I walk here and say to read that text, I am nervous. I was never nervous teaching school for 25 years. I give a lecture, it was just second nature. When I stand here before you, this is serious business. I don't want a bad message. Whether they give a boring lecture at college or a bad lecture, but I don't want a bad, bad sermon. And I hope that when I rely on the Lord, it's the Spirit speaking through me, not my ideas. So the next, what do they do? They put out his eyes. He looked upon sin, and you know what? We become blind to sin if we're not careful. We're blind to the things around us. Spiritual blindness, far worse than the blind preacher right now. They bound him in chains. His feet were bound. He was now bound. Yeah, binded. Yeah, I think it was. No, anyway. They bound him. 
It makes us a slave to sin. The mighty Samson has been reduced to a beast in a grid mill. And notice, even in the movie, he's going around and around. He's not going anywhere. And you won't go anywhere if you're serving Satan. You want to go somewhere and do things for the Lord. You're not going to be in a grist mill. You're going to be out free to share. I've had people tell me when I was a Navy chaplain, well, chaplain, I, I commit myself more to God, I'm going to say, but I want to be free. And I said, pal, you'll never be free until you know Jesus Christ. That's true freedom. My dad said one time, my, my dad kind of was a, you know, he went to be a church cover. But I bought him a Bible, a living Bible. I'm not big on, I'm not big on those Bibles that are translated, you know, the kind of paraphrase. But I'd have to back up on that and say, he got my dad to read the Bible. We didn't have the other translations yet. And I said, you really, you're reading that a lot, aren't you? He said, yeah. I said, it's, it's good. It, it helps the life. Has it changed your life any? And you know what he said to me? And we never had a lot of serious conversations when I was growing up. He said, when I put my head on the pillow, I'm comfortable, relaxed. I don't have to worry. Because this Bible says you don't worry if you're in God's hands. I was really glad to hear my father say that. That's a great thing. Samson lost his freedom. Without the Lord, there can be no real freedom. Turn from God, and your, your life is totally out of control. A bad thing. As you look at Samson, that poor man going round and round in the grist mill, we see that sin can destroy a person. And this sermon is not going to talk about when he got the strength back. We're going to stop right here. Because don't let sin become your downfall. And that's what happened. And I know we can say we love the Lord, but more than ever, we've got to be our spiritual guard. Is that what you call it? Uh, we've got to be on our guard spiritually. Because the devil <coughs> never gives up. He's 24 7 being tempting you. That's serious. So, can you get away with sin? Samson's the strongest man in the world. But he was defeated by sin. We live in a world that likes to play in danger. Romans 6, 23. Kids learn that one. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Without the Lord we cannot win. But with the Lord, because my Bible says with my God, all things are possible. And I truly believe that. If we stay strong spiritually... We can have the glorious freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. You won't have to give in to temptation, but it's going to come. Because the Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion waiting to devour. I know this, uh, and having my, my uh, cats are interesting creatures. And uh, they're interesting. They used to take a little thing and move it around, and they would, you know, they a pointer, and they'll, they'll fall. But they never, they never figured it out. And they love doing it. And they'll go all over. But we had a cat. And I would put something by edge, like on a, a table, if I had a table leg, and the cat would I'd move a little bit, and that cat would get down and look. And just then I stopped, and that cat thought, and he jumped. He looked for the weakness of the prey he was after. And you know what? The devil does the same thing. You get sick, you don't feel good, you've had a bad day. He says, this is the time to tempt him. This is at their weakest moment. You may physically be down, but folks, we've got to stay spiritually strong. If we stay spiritually strong, we will truly have glorious freedom. Think about the freedom we have through Jesus Christ as we now prepare to receive the elements of the bread of the cup. Service of word and table number two, beginning on page 12. <clears throat> Service of word and table number two. I'm waiting for the page to stop turning. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Mercy on God. Here 
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. The cup represents the blood of Jesus, the bread represents his body. Let us read together the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night of which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ is coming again. For at your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, this time we invite you to the Lord's table. Of Jesus. Take now, eat the bread. Remember that Christ died for your sins. As you hold the cup, it represents the blood of Jesus. Take now, drink the cup, and your sins are covered by his saving blood. Lord, we thank you once again to be reminded of your death on the cross and your great love for us. Thank you for being our Savior. In your name we pray. Amen. Go now in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord.
think of Jesus as he died on the cross. No greater love, the Bible says, can one do than lay down their life for another. So take down and eat the bread. Remember, Christ died in your place. And show the cup that represents the blood of Christ, where in life force of body. Jesus shed that blood to be the perfect sacrifice. Take now and drink the cup and be grateful for the salvation of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, again, we thank you for your death on the cross and your great love for us. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Go now in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. represents the body of Jesus Christ. Christ died because he loved you and he became the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. So take now, eat the bread. Remember that Christ died in your place. The cup you hold represents the blood of Christ. Take now and drink the cup and remember that your sins are covered by his saving love. Let us pray. Lord, again, we thank you for being our Savior and the blessings we receive from you. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go now in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord.
bread you hold does represent the body of Jesus Christ. And he was the perfect sacrifice without the spot or blemish. So take now and eat the bread. Remember Christ died as your sacrifice. The cup you hold represents the saving blood of Jesus. Take now, drink the cup, and rejoice that our sins are covered by his saving blood. Let us pray. Lord, communion is always a special time for us because we're reminded once again of your love for us. Thank you for being our Savior and dying in our place. In your name we pray. Amen. Go now in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Our closing hymn is number 397, I Need Thee Every Hour, 397. Yeah. 
seated for our formal response. Jesus Christ, in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord.